everyone, my name is Lindsay and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing the mid-year book freakout tag. This is a tag that's been going around booktube for quite a while and for some reason I've never managed to actually film it and upload it, but this year I was determined to actually do this tag. I haven't done a tag in like a year and also I just think it's fun to do a little mid-year check-in, tell you about some of the books I'm loving, some of the books I haven't been loving, and also just talk about stuff because that's what we're here to do. So I think that this is pretty self-explanatory. You've probably already watched a hundred of these videos by now so I'm not going to go into the details. I will say that I'll try to find the original videos. Leave a link down below if you want to go and check them out. Other than that I'm just going to go ahead and get started with the tag. The first question is to pick the best book you've read so far in 2019. I actually have two answers for this because I have read a lot of really good books this year and I wanted to talk about both of these books so I have a fiction answer and a non-fiction answer. The best fiction book I've read so far in 2019 is A Heart in a Body in the World by Deb Coletti. I read this in January and it stuck with me the whole year. When I was sitting down to come up with the answers for this tag, this is the one that immediately came to mind when I thought of the best book I've read so far this year. And it kind of surprised me because I've read so many good books. This is about a girl named Annabelle who is dealing with a trauma that happened a little over a year ago. And to kind of combat her PTSD, she decides to run from her hometown, Seattle, Washington, all the way to Washington, DC. It's just one of the most hard hitting but also hopeful books that I've ever read and I think that it's very important and I think that a lot of people should read it. I feel like a lot of people already have read it because it did get quite a bit of buzz at the end of last year towards the beginning of this year but it's so good and I cannot recommend it enough. So definitely the best fiction book that I've read so far in 2019. And for my favorite nonfiction book of the year I had to go with The Fact of a Body by Alexandria Marsano Lesnovich. This is part true crime, part memoir about the author and her experience interning at a law firm in Louisiana one summer and coming across a case where a man was imprisoned and convicted of molesting and murdering a little boy. And throughout the process of her learning about this case, she kind of starts to remember some things from her own childhood, some things that she's repressed, and it causes her to start dealing with some family trauma that she has experienced. It's a very hard book to read. I definitely wouldn't recommend it to just anybody, but it was just so well written, so important, just so good, and it's another book that from the time I read it, which I think I read it back in February, um, I have not been able to stop thinking about it. So definitely my favorite nonfiction book of the year. The next question is the best sequel you've read in 2019 and for me it is without a doubt Gemina by Amy Kaufman and Jake Kristoff. This is the second book in the Illuminae Files which I binge read earlier this year because I just got obsessed with it and couldn't stop reading. If you don't know this is a young adult science fiction series set in space and it's about a group of teenagers who come together to conquer this evil company and it's told all in case files and interview transcripts and I just ate it up. I could not stop reading. I started the first one and finished the whole series in just a few days and without a doubt Gemini was my favorite of the series and definitely my favorite sequel that I've read so far this year. The next question is the newest release that you haven't read but want to and for me it is King of Scars by Lee Bardugo. I still haven't read this book even though it came out in January. I pre-ordered it. I've had it on my shelf since January and I still haven't read it which is unfortunate. Next up is your most anticipated releases for the second half of 2019 and I have three answers for this one because I'm just looking forward to so many books coming out in the latter half of the year. First is Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo. This is her newest series. It is an adult sci-fi fantasy series. I don't really know much about it but I do know that I will read anything that Leigh Bardugo writes and also I've seen a ton of really great reviews for it from people that have been reading it early so I can't wait to read Ninth House. Also Call Down the Hawk by Maggie Seavotter which is the first book in the Dreamer trilogy which is a spin-off of The Raven Cycle which is one of my favorite series ever. This is going to be focusing on the character Ronan who is my favorite character in that series so I'm very excited to finally get Call Down the Hawk in my hands. It comes out in November. And my last most anticipated release is the final book in a series that I'm so excited to see how it concludes and it is Five Dark Fates by Kendra Blake. This is obviously the final book in the Three Dark Crowns series. I've been reading the series for a couple of years and I'm just so excited to see how it's going to conclude in this final book. I, I can't imagine how it's all going to go down but I'm so excited to see how it 
does. And I'm pretty sure that this one comes out in September. The next question is your biggest disappointment of 2019. And the book I chose isn't necessarily the book that I gave the lowest rating. It isn't necessarily the book that I had the most negative feelings about. But this book just let me down so much. And it is Vengeful by V.E. Schwab, the sequel to Vicious, which I read last year and loved. I am so mad that I didn't like this book. I go into a pretty ranty review of it in whichever wrap up I talked about it in. I'll leave a link to it somewhere. It just didn't do what I wanted it to do. It just didn't have the same feel that Vicious had. I just felt like it was an unnecessary book, honestly. And I'm really, I'm really sad about it, but it is what it is. The next question is the biggest surprise of 2019 so far, and I actually have two answers for this one. The first of them is a book that I've had on my shelves for so long, and I don't know why I put off reading it, but I'm glad that I finally did because I ended up absolutely loving it, and it is Everything Leads to You by Nina LaCour. This is a YA contemporary about a girl who works as a set designer on movies and TV shows, and it's all about her working on a new film for the summer and falling in love with the lead actress, and it's just so sweet and surprising and everything about it was just so great and I absolutely loved it and if you haven't read this book yet I'd highly recommend it. And my second choice is The Rest of the Story by Sarah Dessen which is Sarah Dessen's newest book. I just talked about it in my June wrap-up. This surprised me because I haven't loved the last couple of Sarah Dessen books that I read but this one just really restored my faith in her as a contemporary author and I'm so glad that I read this and I'm so glad that it did what it did. It's about a girl who goes to stay at her estranged grandparents house for the summer while her dad is on his honeymoon with his new wife and while she's at her grandparents house she reconnects with some old friends and kind of figures out who she is along the way and it's just a sweet easy summer contemporary and I really really loved it. The next question is your newest favorite author and I will admit that I haven't actually come across an author that I would consider a new favorite but I have come across a few authors that I would definitely read again and it could be favorites in the future. So I have three answers. The first of those is Sarah Gailey who is the author of the River of Teeth duology which consists of River of Teeth and Taste of Marrow. I read these books back in January and just was completely surprised by how much fun they were. I just think Sarah Gailey did a really good job of plotting a really fantastic story in such a short amount of time and also developing a crazy set of characters and I just think that they're an author that I could really really love more from in the future so I'm hoping to read more of their books as the year goes on. The second one is Casey McQuiston who wrote one of my favorite books of the year, Red, White, and Royal Blue. You're probably sick of hearing about this book, this author, because it's everywhere right now but it's very well deserved because it's such a fun book and I cannot wait to see what Casey McQuiston does next. And finally Kristen Kishore who is the author of Graceling which is a YA fantasy book that I read and just fell in love with. I have a full video review of it if you want to go and check that out. I have Kristen Couture's newest book on my TBR for July and I'm hoping that I will get a chance to read it at some point. So yeah, Sarah Gailey, Casey McQuiston, Kristen Couture, definitely authors that I want to read more from in the future. Authors that could be favorites if I continue to love their books like I have this year. The next question is newest fictional boyfriend but I am not really into like fictional boyfriends anymore so I'm gonna change the question to newest favorite fictional couple and I have two answers for this one as well. Are you shocked? I'm sure you're not. The first is Katie and Ezra from the Illuminae Files. The first book Illuminae is their story and I, I just love them. I don't really know what it is about Katie and Ezra that made me ship them so hard but I think it's just that they are a couple that Prior to the start of the book they've broken up and then they spend the entire book coming back together and I love their journey, I love their relationship, I love how they talk to each other, I love that it takes a good portion of the book for them to like finally get on the same page but when they do it's just so sweet and I just love them so much. So yes, Katie and Ezra. And also Katza and Poe from Graceling, such a fantastic couple, a couple that builds their entire relationship on communication and honesty. They take their time getting to know each other. They make sure that they are right for each other. Katza doesn't jump into anything lightly and so her starting a relationship with Poe is just so sweet and I just I loved reading their interactions and yeah one of the best fictional couples I've ever read. And speaking of Katza the next question is newest favorite fictional character and 1000% it has to be Katza from Graceling because she is strong independent she knows what she wants she goes after it and she does not take crap from anybody and I I just loved her determination I loved the way her story went and I I'm hoping that she makes 
lots of appearances in the later books in the series because she is definitely one of my newest favorite fictional characters of all time. The next questions are a book that made you cry and a book that made you happy and for the book that made me happy I have to choose Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston because this book is just happiness in 430 pages or however long it is. Everything about this book is sweet and fun I'm not going to talk about it too long because I think everybody has said this as their answer for a book that made you happy. It is a book that will make you happy. Like it's just, it's just a bucket of fun. It's like 400 pages of just pure enjoyment. So yeah, definitely a book that made me happy. And there haven't actually been any books this year that have made me cry, but a book that made me almost cry, a book that definitely hit me in the feels a little bit, was Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Obviously Taylor Jenkins Reid's newest book. One of my favorites of the year, again, I just, I love this story. If you don't know, which I'd be surprised if you didn't, but if you don't know, it is a transcript of interviews of this fictional 70s rock band called Daisy Jones and the Six. And and it's all about them coming to fame and then touring together and then eventually breaking up and it is fantastic and the end of this book while it didn't make me cry I know it did make some people cry and I definitely maybe teared up a little bit the next question is favorite book to movie adaptation that you've seen this year and I've actually only seen one so far this year and it is Ashes in the Snow which is an adaptation of Between Shades of Grey by Ruta Sepetis which is a book that I read a few years ago and I actually think I have a review of it on my channel but it's a book that I really loved. It's a World War II historical fiction book and movie about a girl from Lithuania and it's all about the suffering that Lithuanian people went through during the war. It's a part of World War II history that I actually didn't know much about so reading the book and then now watching the movie is very educational for me and I ended up really really loving the movie. I haven't read the book in a few years obviously so I wasn't really sure how close it was but from what I remember of the book it definitely stuck true to the story and I really ended up enjoying it a lot. It is on Amazon Prime if you have Amazon Prime and want to watch it. That's how I watched it. And yeah, I think I need to up my book to movie adaptation watching game in the second half of the year because like I said, haven't really seen many. Uh, any except that one. Next up is the most beautiful book that you've bought so far in 2019. Without a doubt for me it is going to be The Looking Glass by Janet McNally. You can't really tell because of the lighting situation. It's a beautiful cover. I haven't bought a ton of books this year. I feel like I haven't bought a ton of books with just absolutely stunning covers this year and this is one of them. This is like the one that jumped out at me when I was thinking about this. So yeah, I haven't read this book yet but hopefully I will soon and hopefully the inside will be just as beautiful as the outside. And finally the last question is what books do you need to read before the end of 2019? Obviously I need to continue on and finish off my 2019 TBR, my five star predictions. I actually haven't read any books on that TBR yet. So uh, yeah, I have to, that's 10 books that I need to read. But also like the one book that I'm really gonna like try to get to before the end of the year is The Last Magician by Lisa Maxwell, which is a book that I bought earlier this year and had no real reason to buy it because you know, obviously I'm on a kind of book buying ban right now. And uh, yeah, this is like the one book that I need to read. I'm trying to read it before the end of the summer. I'm trying to read it this month, but so far it hasn't come out of the jar so we'll see how that goes. So that is the mid-year book freakout tag. I'm not going to tag anybody because everybody has pretty much already done this tag and if they haven't they probably are going to so that's that. Let me know down in the comments if you've read any of the books that I mentioned in this video and what you thought about them. Do you have similar or different opinions to some of the things that I said? I'd really love to know. Also let me know some answers that you have to some of these questions. Maybe specifically your favorite and least favorite books of the year so far. I'd be really interested to know that as well. And if you've done the mid-year book freakout tag let me know down in the comments and I will definitely go and check it out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you again very soon. Bye!